Good day to you all. Hope everyone is well. And, uh, oh, okay, hello, little Kit Kat. Are you coming to say hello? Uh, not really, but, uh, at a push. There we go. Say hello to everyone. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't really like to, no, he doesn't like to be picked up, but he'll stick around, he'll come and say hello and everything, but. Picking up is not your thing, hey? Okay, folks, um, we are going to progress further with this piece today. And uh, without further ado, I shall continue. Uh, yes, you can sit there and look at the tripod. Okay. So we've got, uh, that's, if you can hear the diesel engine in the background, that's KitKat. Hey KitKat. KitKat. Um, no, let's just, let's actually, I want to use my, I want to use these little bits of black. Yes, KitKat, I can't, um, <laughs> KitKat uh, wants um, attention now. Uh, oh. Okay. So I can't particularly give him. So there's this uh, a very heavy contrast here with it, with it, where there's lots of splashes, splish splashes, um, and uh, where there's quite deep because there's a, there's an undercut here um, in the cliff face. Damn, Mozzie is buzzing me. Lord, get away from me. Um, so this cliff comes over here with this great big, almost, almost uh, convex, flattish convex rock. It comes over here, drops down there, and then underneath it, it's cut away into, into a, it, in fact, it goes quite deep, deep in. So there's a really deep blackness behind it here, where the sun don't shine. Um, and then there's this stark white contrasting um, light of the light through the uh, through the water as it passes down the. Uh, can kind of do.
know I keep blotting out this line work that I'm doing that I've been kept on doing in white. That's okay though because I'll just keep coming back. <laughs> Woohoo! Um, what I also shall do though, however, where are you, little colour? Is uh, put some indigo in. Indigo in, indigo go. Indigo in. Here we go. And the indigo, I'll oh, just put in the, in the slightly upper edges and even here where there's this slick black rock. Just to take that, the, subtly take the edge off the, the inky blackness, if you know what I'm saying. So it's got this slight, slight blue to it. And that's enough. So I want to use my eraser. I want to use my eraser here now. Little bit, little bit. Little bit, little bit. Let's put that back up there. If that's going to actually interfere with the okay. So what I'm using my eraser for here is as a blending tool. And, uh, and I just want to accentuate or even create some nice kind of patterns, not patterns so much, but just this effect of smoothness, slickness in these rocks. Because they're all just completely, um, completely wet. So even if the water, the, the, the cascading water is not pouring directly onto it, there's this, there's this constant spray everywhere, the spray, um, mist, um, which settles on all of these rocks everywhere around here. So everything is just glistening, glistening wet. Uh, yeah. So with that, I want to just try and get some of the, uh, just the smoothness. We've got, we've got contrast, we've got color. I just want to add some smoothness to this whole piece and then and then after that even go over it once again in more detail with more sort of with a more detailed approach as well and my eraser 
is is great for for blending and creating techniques etc wherever I might need them um, I don't imagine you could use it effect that effectively uh, with using oil pastels I haven't tried I haven't tried that because I have used oil pastels before but not with any of these extra um, random tools that I've come across over, over the uh, over the years in fact I really don't like working with oil pastels and for my own just for my own reasons um, no. <laughs> Be and because the the, uh, the chalk pastels or soft pastels as some some are wanted to call them um, work so much better with the charcoal as a complementary medium. So there you have it. There you have it, folks. There you have it. Oh goodness, there's a lot of work still to do, huh? Um, So once more, just using my eraser to just soften the soften the pastel and and Conte white that I've been working with, and
I'm uh, kind of accentuating the, the flow a little bit up here. Not water, but uh, it look at it, or at least it appears as such, but it's not really. Um, I'm going to now start working on this, on this a little bit more. Uh, I'm just using my contact crayon at this stage. So these uh, lines of water, these little tendrils that dribble down off the off the top edge of the of the cliff here, um, are then shifted about somewhat. Um, number one by the 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 wind currents in the area, in the region, and second of all, by this, uh, I don't know what you would call it. it, it's not a centrifugal force, but it's a, you know, the, the, as I've explained before, so the, uh, the water runs down this, down this rock, and then where it, where the rock kind of goes inwards and it, as it dri dribbles off the edge it kind of pulls back almost in what as if it wants to go into the cliff and then straightens out so there's obviously a, a vortex that is uh, created behind the behind the waterfall behind the falling water um, so that it's, it's 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 pulled back for this longish drop down here and then and of course then there's other other it goes in other directions as well depending on the pull the wind currents and all that stuff it's interesting these little observations that one has when you actually depicting the story and then you start asking why and then you start getting into physics and what have you Newtonian laws and uh, which I don't know <laughs> uh, I just make assumptions I make observations and make assumptions accordingly So I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm doing a couple of, some of these lines, I'm doing them quite hard because you've got uh, a slightly harder dribble and then on either side of that and through it you've got fainter lines as well. So. And 
some of those lines I need to depict in. So I'm using my pastel, the white pastel here a little bit as well. The real highlight will come with the use of uh, the acrylic. Uh, A little bit more, and a little bit more, a wee bit more.
So, uh, as you can see, it's a, uh, and as I mentioned yesterday, there's a lot, a lot of line work to be, to be done here. Lots and lots and lots of doodling, in fact, is what I'm working with. Squiggly lines, straight lines, short lines, long lines, wavy lines, jiggly lines. <laughs> Just a little bit of lilac here and there, and, and, eh? mm. just for the hell of it. Can't go wrong with a little bit of lilac. It's 
it's almost uh, it, it's it's uh, like brings in this little bit of a sheen, but it's not too light that it gets lost. It's not too dark that it makes a too much of an impact. And then I can work over that in white. And then you've got this lovely layer underneath. Um, with creating a little bit of contrast. So that's it. It's, it all works out nicely. Of course, topping up with a little charcoal here and there as well. Yeah. The one thing I like, that I particularly enjoy about starting my day really early, um, is that I start. I I can hear in the background. As I'm working away here, you hear in the background the birds starting to wake up and and stretch their legs and their wings and start with the morning call, the morning song. It's nice to be there with even before the first of them. It's really special.
the swear net. <laughs> This way and that. make a little bit of space here <clears throat> and drop this piece down again that's, that's that and that's that so that I can work more without having to stretch can work easier without having to stretch rather especially as I go up here Right, and I want to as well. Tomorrow I shall add, um, might start today, but I don't think so. And I want to start adding a little bit more color into the upper right regions of this piece. Um, uh, yeah, that, that I want to do on the last, predominantly on the last day. So it's, um, you know, a little bit of intrigue, something that, that makes the whole piece kind of work much more effectively. Um, along with my acrylic work and all that, I'm not to leave that until the last day. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a, something to look forward to, really. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll, I shall do that tomorrow. Um, I'm not, I, I realize that I'm not going to finish this piece today. Um, Oof. 
fully accepted the fact already. Um, so tomorrow it is. And all the kind of slightly more subtle details that, that, that go with that. Goodness me, another knot. Ah, get out. Really? Are you that stubborn? No matter how hard, you see, I could have done this whole piece, um, the dark parts, with with um, my charcoal. But it doesn't matter how hard you press; you'll never get as dark as the as the compressed charcoal or the black pastel. Um, so you've got this capacity to really play with a broader range of 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 shade of dark so from your even pale gray to uh, to your midtones and then the, 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 so your your Charcoal will take take it through to the to the upper mid tones, the darker mid tones, and then thereafter the uh, and you've also got the the black conte, which I haven't used much of yet. Um, so next level up, and the next level up would be the compressed charcoal, and then the uh, at least, sorry, the, the, the black pastel, and then the very darkest level would be the compressed charcoal. So you've got this almost almost a layering effect, but also a, a wonderful um, spectrum of of shadow, of dark rather. Um, of course, worked in with certain hues of blue. So it doesn't take on this, you've still got body to the piece. It's still got, um, it's got dimension. It's got um, depth, depth of feel and all that. But because of that, because you've got these wonderful, wonderful layers of black. I mean, if you think about it, charcoal as a color, In terms of perhaps a fabric, charcoal is different. Is, is is defined as a very dark grey, slate, even darker than slate perhaps. But uh, yeah, you get different. Yeah, different, different uh, applications. You, you it gets given different names and so on and so forth. But 
charcoal as a as a fabric color, a charcoal colored suit, uh, for example, um, is this uh, wonderful rich gray, but it's not black. Black is much harsher, like a tuxedo, for example, or a car, um, charcoal. Charcoal gray in a car is is, a, is not quite gray. It's a darker, much darker gray, but it's not black. So here, I've got a whole range of 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 dark um, blacks or um, contrasting shadow shade. Um, which might not be visible on a, on the video, but but when I can see it, there's there's a great deal of perspective going on. Um, which is fantastic. And I can also use my very blackest compressed charcoal sparingly. Just the hint of this hint of black black. Again, creating a lovely texture. And I'll employ that tomorrow. As I finish off with these highlights and lowlights. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, like I said, this is almost what was the the, the 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 extreme contrasts of dark and light in this piece. It's very unlike many of them. Most of the other, nearly all of the other pieces that I've done so far, the, the level of contrast. Um, so it's almost a black and white image, but it's but with the introduction of a little color here and there, it just brings it more to life. Um, a lot has uh, 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 a lot. <laughs> there's a lot to be said for um, black and white. Make no mistake. Um, especially with with regards to photography, I, I, I think um, you can you can be a lot more artistic and expressive with black and white photography, and in certain instances, in many cases, with regards to drawing, um, just using charcoal, for example. Um, but here, I, I, I'm depicting a scene that is uh, that I want to 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 pull together all the 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 essence of of this particular location. So there's this there's this hint of green, freshness, um, lushness, um, green and yellow, um, warmth, so, so on. Um, the reflected sky and, and those kinds of things which which I wouldn't really be able to to depict that effectively <clears throat> without without using a, a touch of color so even though I'm using it very sparingly it's uh, it's coming through to great effect which I find very pleasing indeed. It's 
So I'm just working with my um, <clears throat> compressed chalk. I, I have to keep on trying to think of all the different tools. <laughs> Uh, so compressed charcoal that I'm using now, um, just with some very contrasting line work. Um, to try and capture these. These rocks down here. These layers. As I said, they almost appear to be having been constructed by some humanoid at some point in, in, in millennia back, millennia ago. Um, Some big giant has come along and put these great big stones down. <laughs> Could well be for all we know. <laughs> for all I know, rather. Ah, okay, let's just do some more of this. So one can hopefully start to get the idea, and I don't necessarily need to depict them, I feel. I, 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 I like to leave a great deal, well, as much as possible to the imagination, so that what you see is what you see. Um, and you create your story. Some of you might see a scene where there are elementals, perhaps fairies and goblins, maybe in the trees, and I, I, I don't know, but 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 that sort of thing um, in a scene like this, which is empty of those, but yet so full of them, and whatever it is that you want to that you seek to depict. So um, I just kind of here yeah, create the platform, help to create the platform for that for that imagination. Um, and for that reason as well, for through with all of my works, all but one, um, the, the first the first one that I had started working on with this with this particular paper the very first one I depicted a scene of a river with a bridge and and what have you um, and, and and a man a fisherman um, since then I haven't featured a single person depicted a single person um, and for the reason that I don't believe that people are relevant in these kind of if you think about it um, the human species is kind of transient by, and we're kind of self-destructive um, we don't belong here <laughs> we don't really don't belong here and uh, but this scene will always be, always has been, always will be, with with or without. And all of my scenes, actually, well, except for the ones where I've used kind of street scenes um, and uh, and so on, the and depicting the Boer Carp or Belfast or wherever it might be. Um, but even in those, there's no people. There's just maybe cars, so it hints at the presence of humanity. But uh, I don't, there's no need to, because we place ourselves there. And I think that's that's really the crux of it. That's 
we picture ourselves there. We fill in the gaps. Our mind fills in the gaps for us. It's a wondrous thing. Um, this, this capacity for, for filling in. And it also is a, it's also a dangerous thing because we tend to overfill things or, or fill in with stuff that is 